Hello and a warm welcome to Fun of Flying. Now you probably won't know this, but I first listed my Fun of Flying YouTube channel nearly two years ago now, and every single Arduino based video that I've ever posted since has stemmed from this, the Eligu starter kit that I bought from Amazon for around £60 or around 75 bucks. And frankly, if I hadn't have made this purchase, then I certainly wouldn't have gone on to learn about basic electronics. I wouldn't have known anything whatsoever about the dark art of writing Arduino sketch code. And there's absolutely no way that I could have been able to link all of this to any flight simulator. Net result, no YouTube channel. Anyway, thankfully I persevered and here we are. So what shall we do today? Well, I was rooting through my Eligu starter kit recently and found this, a flexible membrane keypad, and it got me thinking if there was any way it could be used as part of a home cockpit flight simulator setup. So off I went, wiring everything up, and then writing a short sketch code, an example of which I found on the interweb, only to realise at the end of the day that all I'd be able to do, in the code's existing format anyway, was to send up to 16 single characters of my choice to the Arduino serial monitor. Now obviously that was about as much use as a chocolate fire guard, but it didn't come as any real surprise, as it was after all a very basic test just to see how the membrane keypad setup actually worked. So the next question I had was, what do I need to do now to get a similar but much more robust keypad functioning and then get it to send input signals to a flight simulator. Well, the answer to this actually led me down another path entirely. And for me, something that was completely new. And what I mean by this is that it took me down the path of making my own first electronic circuit board. And I made it out of these few components here. Now, I think you all know well enough by now that I am in no way a professional computer programmer and I'm also certainly not an electronics engineer. I've never had any life experience in either of these fields. Having said that though, I still managed to come up with this. A fully functional keypad with 16 momentary push buttons and two pin headers, all soldered onto double-sided fiberglass prototype board. Now this is good news indeed, because if I can do something like this, then so can all my lovely viewers. And what got me started on this in the first place was a YouTube channel produced by a chap in Germany, I think, whose channel name is Buried. Uh, the video concerned demonstrated a really cool way of linking components together by soldering fine solid tin copper wire from point A to B as required. Now on the basis that I'm not currently able to make my own printed circuit boards, which probably would be preferable due to their small scale, I thought that this alternative soldering method would be a brilliant compromise and on that basis I started to have a go for myself, as you can see here. Basically I used 28 AWG gauge wire with the PVC sheath taken off to join the ground side of four push buttons in one row and then repeated same for the other three rows. Then I joined the signal side of four push buttons in one column and repeated same for the remaining three columns to form a grid, being careful to insulate any points where the ground and signal circuits could come into contact at the grid intersections. Each row of ground wire links were then soldered to individual pins on one of the headers and each column of signal wire links were soldered to individual pins on the other header. Now obviously the pin headers that I've used are far too large for what I actually require and many of their pins will remain unoccupied but this was just down to a lack of foresight on my part when designing the prototype board in the first place. Anyway, the prototype setup that I produced was this which admittedly is a bit rough and ready and obviously very temporary but with a bit of refinement it could easily become part of a professional looking home cockpit. In terms of the wiring, button row 1 connects to pin terminal 9 on the Leonardo, row 2 to 8, 3 to 7 and 4 to 6. Button columns 1, 2, 3 and 4 connect to pin terminals 5 through 2 respectively. 
Then we come down to the very small amount of coding required to make my new keypad work. And the first thing that we need to include in the code is this keypad.h library, which can be obtained free from the GitHub repository uh, from this address shown here. Then we need to declare how many rows and how many columns we need in our grid matrix, and we're having four, four rows and four columns. In this little uh, array here, we are declaring which characters we want to present on the serial monitor uh, later on um, when we press each of the buttons. So when I press uh, the button in column one and row one, i.e. the top left hand button, we are going to get the number one printed out and so on and so forth as you go through. In the next section, we're declaring the um, pin terminal numbers uh, on the Arduino that our columns and rows from the keypad will be connected to. Then we initialize the uh, keypad.h library. Uh, we initialize the serial monitor because we want to look at the results uh, from, the re from the output from pressing the um, push buttons on my keypad. And then down here, uh, we're setting a variable called custom key, and that will equal whatever value is sent from the keypad when we press the buttons on it. And this line here is just basically saying if there is any value being sent by the keypad, uh, no matter what value that is, then serial print that uh, value to the monitor that we will look at. OK, so I'm just going to quickly test this out. So we'll open up the uh, serial monitor here. Let's bring that to the middle. And I'm going to press each of the buttons on my keypad uh, one at a time and see what happens. So here's the top left hand one. One. The next one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 13, 14, 15, 16. So that's all 16 buttons pressed. And uh, this is obviously uh, how the array was set up. So we get a different value for each button as I press it. OK, so now we've been through that exercise. What exactly has it achieved in terms of our objectives? Well, I certainly feel that we've achieved our first goal and that was to make a keypad that was far more robust than the flimsy and flexible membrane keypad that we started off with. However, with regard to the keypad's ability to communicate with a flight simulator, it hasn't actually got us very far, at least not yet. So what we need to look at next is the all important sketch code that controls everything. And what I've done is seriously modify the original sketch code that I showed you just now so that it now turns the Leonardo microcontroller into a HID device, thus allowing signal inputs to be sent directly to Windows and subsequently to a flight simulator. And it is these signal inputs, of course, that can be assigned in the virtual cockpit as required, something we'll get back to later. In the meantime, we'll quickly go through my new adapted code. Right, so here we are uh, within the Arduino IDE desktop application and some of the code that's in this particular sketch has derived from the previous code that I showed you. Not all of it by any means, but probably about half. But a bit of blurb to start with. Firstly, um, this uh, sketch code will only work with the Arduino Leonardo or any other um, Arduino board that has the AT Mega 32 U4 processor on it and that's because it has its own native USB support and uh, human interface device capabilities so that will not work then with the Mega 2560 or the Uno. Um, the code will however work or should work with any flight simulator and I've certainly tested it in uh, X-Plane 12 and also uh, Microsoft 2020 and it seems to work okay with both of those. Right, so initial setup, um, we need two libraries, one I showed you in the previous sketch which is the keypad.h library and to turn the Arduino into a HID device uh, we need this library here, the joystick.h library which you've probably seen many times before 
and can be imported within the Arduino IDE Library Manager. Then we set up how many rows and columns we want in our grid matrix for the keypad that we're using, which in our case is four rows and four columns. Then we declare which characters we want to return or be returned uh, when we press any of the push buttons on the keypad itself. And I've chosen um, the first 16 letters of the alphabet, A through P for Papa. They could be any single characters in here or numbers. It doesn't matter as long as you're consistent with what you use here uh, further down in the loop section when these uh, letters become more important. Then we declare uh, pin terminal numbers on the Arduino Leonardo to connect our rows and columns to. Uh, in our case, we've got the rows going from um, pin terminals 9 through 6 and the columns going from 5 through to 2. Then we initiate the keypad.h library and we also set up our uh, joystick um, settings here. Um, and the only bit that we're really interested in is this here, this 16, and that's 16 push buttons as a maximum. You can have up to 32 there. This is for hat switches. You can have up to two there. We're not using them, so that's a zero. And these are for joystick axes or potentiometers that you want to use for different axes in the flight simulator. We're not using them, so all of those declarations remain false. Then we come down to the void setup and there's only one thing in here and that is to uh, initiate the joystick library. Right now we come down to the uh, void loop section and uh, this is the um, additional part that I've uh, put in over and above the code that I showed you before and all of this here um, is a convenient method to read the inputs from the keypad and then secondly use whatever data it receives from the keypad to send individual inputs to Windows uh, which can then be assigned in the flight simulator as required. So this first bit here is we're setting up a variable called key and that key equals whatever letter is received at any time from the keypad itself whether it's a b c d or e it doesn't matter whatever it is at any given moment that's what that value key will equal so then we go down to this bit here and we're basically asking if the value from the push button received is the letter a which will be the top left button on the on the keypad in this case then send a command to Windows to press a virtual button zero. Wait for 250 milliseconds and then send another command to Windows to release that same virtual button. Then we go and do the same thing for all of the remaining 15 push buttons on our keypad. Only this time we're looking, if we take this one here, we're looking uh, or it's waiting for the um, push button to be pressed that equates to the letter B and if it sees or reg registers the letter B um, coming through the pipe from the keypad then this time we want to press the virtual uh, button in Windows number one wait uh, 250 milliseconds and then release that button and it's the same thing for all of the others so in this one we're looking for the letter C coming from the keypad letter D, E and so on and so forth. So there will be uh, this this bunch of code here, there will be 16 in all separate sections of this and the difference between them is that letter there which will be a different letter of the alphabet that we set up uh, in the uh, earlier part of the code and this number here which will be the virtual uh, Windows uh, push button number and that's it. OK, so in order to uh, check all that code out, we just need to quickly come into Windows Control Panel, Hardware and Sound, uh, Devices and Printers, and we should find our Leonardo listed, which we do. So right click uh, with the mouse, Game Controller Settings, uh, Properties, and there are the 16 virtual push buttons that we created in our code. Now, 
excuse me I've got to, I'm trying to record this um, narrate it and uh, and be the actor as well so if I could just get my hand through there without obscuring the in video inlay that you should be able to see I'm going to press these buttons one at a time change hand I think excuse me right there we are so I'm going to press uh, this first button here and button one should light up in the control panel which it does then two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen and sixteen okay so hopefully you you saw all that um sorry if my hand got in the way um but uh, that'll work so that's good so we can move on to the next stage now whilst i was uh, recording that previous piece um it occurred to me that i may not have explained myself very well in terms of how the arduino uh, leonardo microcontroller knows which button is being pressed uh, on the keypad um but it all comes down to uh, the fact that these four buttons here are in all connected together this way and these four and these four and these four and all the columns are connected to this way uh, in this grid array and what i think the microcontroller is doing is reading constantly reading these pin numbers that uh, all the rows are connected to and constantly reading all of these pin numbers that the columns are connected to and if it detects a voltage state change say in pin 2 which would be uh, column 1 and also in pin 9 on row 1 then it's going to deduce that it must be that button there that's been pressed and then it just uh, uh, it presents the letter that's associated with that button if it detects a, a change or status change in pin uh, 5 which is for the fourth column and also pin 7 on the third row then it's going to assume that it's this button here that's being pressed now it's probably far more complicated than that but um, not being an expert it's, that's the only way I can really explain it um, I hope that helps so the next thing to do is to go into X-Plane first of all and I've loaded the Zeebo uh, 737-800X aircraft and uh, I just need to find out whether all of the 16 buttons that I created in my code and the ones that have been recognized by Windows are now also being recognized by X-Plane and as you can see it appears to be the case so we've got the 16 buttons there and if I press the 16 buttons on my uh, keypad you should see them being recognized like so yeah two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen and sixteen so they all work and they are recognized that's good so um i've already assigned um my keypad buttons to various activities in the virtual cockpit the first eight um are um various cockpit views and the last eight are uh, certain switches and so on on the upper control panel in the aircraft so we'll come back to this later and i will show you all of that working uh, but next I'm going to go into um, Microsoft 2020 and see if my keypad is recognized there as well okay then so this is Microsoft 2020 I've loaded a um, basic Cessna Skyhawk for the purposes of this demonstration um, but that's only because I have the greatest difficulty in this particular simulator trying to find assignable uh, commands um, it's either because I just can't find them or they're not there I'm not sure which so that uh, seems to be a bigger problem the, the more complex the aircraft but anyway for the purposes of this we have our Skyhawk so I'm just going to press the buttons uh, on my keypad and see if Microsoft recognizes them uh, okay two three four five six seven eight and if we scroll down to these ones we've got 
9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 and 16. And I've done something similar here as well. The first eight buttons I've assigned to various cockpit views and the other ones I've assigned to um, uh, switches and so on in the cockpit. Right, so now we're going to go back to explain and we'll actually um, go in, we'll load the aircraft, we'll go into the cockpit and then I'll overlay my uh, keypad uh, in a little video and you'll be able to see me pressing the buttons on that and uh, also be able to see what it does in the aircraft. So explain first and then we'll come back to Microsoft 2020 and do exactly the same thing. Okay, so here we are back in uh, X-Plane again uh, in our 737 and uh, I'm now going to just to start pushing some buttons on my keypad. I'll start with the yellow ones which are programmed to change the change uh, various cockpit views. So I'll press on the first one. Uh, I always find this very handy flying this aircraft because it takes you immediately to where you need to be. Uh, and I generally always start with the electronic flight book. I press the next one, it takes me to the overhead panel, or the lower part of it and the main part. The next one is the upper section of the overhead panel. Um, where do we go from there? To the radio panel, um, to the throttles, flaps and uh, engine starting mechanisms, to the, um, what do they call that, glare shield console to the uh, FMC and then a general view of the cockpit overall. Um, if we go back to the overhead panel then I programmed some of these uh, red buttons or all of these red buttons to do other things. Um, this is normally I guess with a home cockpit setup you'd use uh, toggle switches and things like that um, but this I've just set this up just to give you the full potential of what the keypad can do. So if we press this one uh, we get um, uh, ground power, uh, or sorry, that was battery. Um, then we get emergency lights. Um, I can't remember what all these do now, but we'll go through them. Uh, that was ground power. Uh, sorry, I pressed the, um, go back up to that again. I pressed the wrong button, that was me. So we've got ground power. Um, that's uh, wing lights. Logo lights. Anti collision lights. Um, landing lights. And that was your damper, which won't select now because um, we haven't got the engines running and it's not ready. So that uh, all works. Uh, go back to overview of the cockpit if I can find the right one. There we are. Sorry about that. There we are. So uh, it all seems to work, which is very good news. So I'm going to go back into Microsoft 2020 now and do exactly the same thing. Um, and uh, let's see what happens there. OK, so if we just carry out the same sort of exercise in uh, MS FS 2020. So again, uh, I think I've programmed the yellow buttons to do cockpit various views of the aircraft and uh, the red ones for various switches um, and I can't remember now which way around they are so we'll start with the first one which didn't do anything so, oh sorry that one the first one is uh, up and down like that and up for that one down for that one and the next one is a left pan Number four on the top row is right pan, like so. Put it back again. Number five uh, is up, and number six is down. Number seven is down and right, and I think this last one is uh, to reset cockpit view, like that. So that all works. So if we just, uh, where was the look down one? No, the wrong way, there we are. Look down. I'm just going to use my mouse to clear the yoke. And uh, I'll start pressing the red ones. 
I think the first one is battery. No, beacon. Landing. Taxi. Nav. Battery. Alternator. Avionics. I can't remember what this is. This is fuel pump, I think. Yeah, fuel pump. And you can turn them all off again using push buttons. Like so. And there we are. So another success in a different simulator. And I'm absolutely convinced that uh, where keyboard commands are used to operate simulators, uh, such as in DCS world, uh, as, a, as another one, um, this same thing will work in there as well, just with a bit of uh, keyboard assignments. Brilliant. Okay, so let's move on. Okay then, so that really brings us to the end of this particular video and an update on my little research project. Basically, I wanted to find out if a flexible membrane keypad could work as part of a home cockpit setup and actually ended up learning how to make an electronic keypad circuit board. So for me, the whole exercise was extremely worthwhile and I have to say very satisfying. Not only did I produce a reasonably robust 16 push button keypad, but I also wrote a sketch code that would allow my new keypad to be recognized by Windows and by a flight simulator, or two flight simulators in this case. In terms of making the keypad itself, not having done any serious soldering before, this, I have to say, proved a bit challenging to start with. But once I got the hang of it, then things started to get a bit easier. And if you want to have a go at making a circuit ball for yourself using this same soldering method, then my advice to you, if you've not done it before, would be to take your time and not rush things. I would also strongly suggest that you take a look at the Bered video that I referred to as this includes some very close up views of the guy's soldering skills and also provides a good insight into how to make circuit boards for yourself. Over and above that I would definitely recommend you purchase a few handy tools such as a variable heat soldering iron, a good quality illuminated magnifying glass to see what you're doing and some method of holding the workpiece firmly so that it doesn't move whilst you're soldering. I use the Weller Helping Hands device. On top of that, a decent rosin flux paste, solder with a rosin flux core, and a gauze pot to keep your soldering tip clean. Lastly, always have a small roll of solder wick to hand in case you need to remove any excess. So there we are then, the end of yet another project that you may even wish to have a go at yourselves at some point. I certainly enjoyed it and more importantly I learnt a lot from going through the process. Hopefully then you also found the video enjoyable, interesting and maybe even somewhat inspiring and if you did don't forget to smash the like button and even consider subscribing so as not to miss anything in future. As always if you have any questions please let me know and I'll try to assist you where I can. Finally, I would like to thank you again for your continued support of my channel and wish you all the good things that life has to offer. Ta-ta for now.